Have you ever been showered with affection one moment and then felt utterly invisible the next? You're not alone. Today, we're diving into the bewildering world of the narcissistic cycle, from the intoxicating phase of love bombing to the puzzling stage of devaluation by a narcissistic wife. If you're ready for some eye-opening insights that could illuminate your path forward, you're in the right place. And I've got a special nugget of wisdom waiting for you at the end. A bonus tip that'll shine a light on how to navigate these tricky waters. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. So, are you ready to get into it? Let's jump right in. 1. Love bombing One day, everything's normal, and then boom, you're swamped with affection, gifts, and promises of forever. Your wife is all in, making you feel like the star of your own romantic movie. It's intense, right? But here's the thing, it's not just about making you feel good, there's a catch. This shower of love isn't just because, it's about locking you in, making sure you're so hooked on this feel good vibe that you can't imagine life without it. The tricky part is, it feels amazing. Who doesn't want to feel adored and cherished? But here's the thing, it's not about building something real, it's about creating a bond quick, so when the next phase hits, you're too tangled up to easily step back. Keep this in mind, if it feels too good to be true, too fast, it just might be. Love is great, but real love? It takes time, getting to know each other, flaws and all. So, if your whirlwind romance is more whirlwind than romance, take a step back and ask, is this real, or am I getting love bombed? 2. Idealisation This is where things get a bit Hollywood, but not necessarily in a good way. Imagine being put on a pedestal so high, you'd need a parachute to get down. Sounds fun for a minute, right? But here's the catch. When you're up on that pedestal, there's nowhere to go but down. In this stage, your wife sees you as Mr. Perfect, the answer to all her prayers. Every little thing you do is amazing, and she's telling you and everyone else how incredible you are. But hold on, it's not as sweet as it sounds. This isn't just about making you feel good. It's about setting the stage for what comes next. By making you out to be this flawless person, the fall to reality is going to be tough. And that's the plan. When the switch flips, and it will, you'll find yourself scrambling to get back to that high, trying to prove you're still that perfect person. But here's the thing, nobody's perfect, and that's okay. Real love is about seeing each other for who you truly are, quirks and all, and loving each other more for it. So, if you find yourself on this unrealistic pedestal, enjoying the view but feeling a bit wobbly, remember, real connections are built on solid ground, not shaky pedestals. Keep it real, and don't lose yourself in someone else's idea of perfect. 3. Devaluation This is where the roller coaster takes a nosedive, and not the fun kind. Remember all that adoration and those sky-high praises? Well, now the script flips. Suddenly, it's like you can't do anything right. That pedestal you were on, it's like it never existed. Now, it's all about pointing out flaws, small digs, and criticisms where there used to be compliments. It's confusing, right? One day you're the hero, and the next, you're wondering what you did wrong to change things so fast. But here's the thing, it's not about what you did or didn't do. This shift isn't really about you at all. It's part of the cycle, a way to keep you off balance. When you're busy trying to fix things, to get back to that idealised version of yourself, you're not seeing the bigger picture. This stage can be tough. It chips away at your self-esteem, making you question your worth and what you bring to the table. But remember, real love doesn't come with a condition that you have to be perfect. It's about accepting each other, flaws and all. So, if you find yourself in this stage, feeling like you're always on the back foot, take a moment, step back and ask yourself, is this how I deserve to be treated? Love is supposed to lift you up, not tear you down. If this video is helping, why not show a little support? Hitting that like button, dropping a comment, or subscribing can make a world of difference. Your input shapes our journey together, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences below. 4. Gaslighting and Manipulation Picture this. You remember something one way, but your wife insists it happened differently. 
not just once or twice, but all the time. It's like you're in a maze, and every turn you take, she's there telling you you're going the wrong way, even when you know you're not. That's gaslighting. It makes you doubt your own memory, judgment, and even sanity. And manipulation? It's all the little ways she might try to steer you in the direction she wants, often so subtly you don't even notice it's happening. It could be playing the victim or twisting things around so somehow you end up apologising when you're not even sure what you did wrong in the first place. It's like being a puppet in someone else's play. You're trying to follow the script, but the lines keep changing. Here's the deal. In a healthy relationship, you're supposed to be partners, not puppet and puppeteer. You should be able to trust your own mind, speak your piece, and know it will be respected. So, if you're feeling all turned around, like up is down and left is right, take a step back. Talk to friends, family, someone outside the situation. Get some perspective, because in the end, trust is key. And you should be able to trust yourself first and foremost. Don't let anyone take that away from you. 5. Discard This is when things can feel like they hit rock bottom. After all the ups and downs, the love bombs, the pedestal, and then the devaluation, comes the moment where you might find yourself suddenly on the outside looking in. It's like one day you're the most important part of her world, and the next, you're wondering if you were ever really part of it at all. It's tough, no sugarcoating it. One minute you're trying to get back to the good times, patch things up, and next, you're left wondering what happened. It can feel like a cold splash of water, waking you up from a dream, and it's not the gentlest of awakenings. But here's the silver lining, if we can call it that. This phase, as hard as it is, can also be a turning point. It's a chance to take a step back, catch your breath, and look at things from a distance. It's an opportunity to reassess, to ask yourself what you really want and deserve in a relationship. If you find yourself in this spot, feeling discarded and down, Remember, it's not the end. It's a chance to rebuild, to find your footing again, and to move forward, maybe a little wiser, definitely stronger. It's about picking up the pieces, but this time, you get to decide how they fit together. You're not alone, and this isn't the final act. It's just a part of your story, and the next chapter is yours to write. 6. Hoovering and the Cycle Repeats just when you think it's all over, there's a twist. Hoovering is like getting a callback for an encore in a play you thought had its final curtain. It's when, after all the drama, the cold shoulder, and maybe some quiet on your mind, out of the blue, she's back. And not just back, but back with the charm cranked up. Maybe even some apologies or promises that this time, things will be different. It's named after the vacuum cleaner for a reason. It's about trying to suck you back into the cycle, back into the drama. And it's tricky, because part of you might remember the good times and think, maybe this time it really will be different. But here's the thing, if you've been through the cycle once, twice or more, you've got to ask yourself, do I really want to go for another round? This is where learning from the past comes in. Remembering the signs, the patterns, and asking yourself if you're ready to put your heart on the line again for another go on the roller coaster. It's tough, especially when the good times were really good. But it's also a chance to stand firm, to remember your worth, and to choose a path that leads to a healthier, happier you. If you find yourself facing the hoover, take a moment. Think about what you've learned, about how far you've come, and ask yourself what you really want moving forward. Remember, every step you've taken has made you stronger, and this is just another step on your journey. Bonus tip, embracing self-worth and boundaries. After going through the whirlwind of being with a narcissistic partner, it's crucial to take a step back and focus on you. It's about asking, what do I value in myself and in my relationships? Building up your self-worth is like laying down a solid foundation after a storm. It's knowing that you're valuable, deserving of respect and worthy of love, just as you are. And setting boundaries that's about drawing your line in the sand. It's saying, this is what I'm okay with, and this is what I'm not. It's about knowing what you will and won't accept in a relationship and sticking to it. So, take some time for yourself. Reflect on what's important to you, 
what makes you feel valued and respected, and start from there. Build those boundaries and wear your self-worth like a badge of honour. You've got so much to offer, and any relationship worth its salt will recognise and celebrate that. You're in the driver's seat, and it's time to steer your life in the direction that brings you peace, respect, and genuine happiness. To empower yourself, check out tactics to stay calm and grounded amidst narcissistic chaos, or learn about signs your wife's apology might not be genuine. For more insights into manipulation, thanks for watching.